Hello, it's Elder here, and today I want to go ahead and briefly share with you some of the items that I keep in my go bag when I'm either out in the field or uh, mainly hiking with my dogs. Uh, keep in mind that the way that we practice and live now is uh, pretty much how we're going to react and be prepared in an emergency situation. So uh, keep in mind that perfect practice makes perfect. So let's get started. Okay, a blanket. Uh, there's uh, tons of options out there uh, from polyester to nylon. A lot of this uh, tougher ripstop type material that'll bode well and last, especially as my dogs are uh, climbing all over it. Now, not only does it th this add to their comfort, but it's also a great barrier to uh, keep them away from the critters, whether it's ticks, fleas, ants, uh, just uh, makes them a lot more comfortable. And of course, in a pinch, can use this uh, to give them some shade from the sun, and of course, protect them from uh, a downpour, let's say, that we weren't really counting on. A leash and a harness. Uh, keep in mind that a lot of the places that I do hike with, with my dogs uh, require uh, them to be leashed, so it is the law. And when it comes to the harness, it's basically, once again, just adding a bit more comfort. When I'm hiking with them, I do use their uh, regular collar. But when we do take a break, especially an extended break, uh, whether it's a chow break or whether I'm uh, trying to accomplish a mission out there, reviewing gear, uh, whatever it may be, I like to go ahead and uh, transfer their leash basically to their harness to give them a bit more comfort and uh, have them relax, especially after miles and miles of them pulling to the left or pulling to the right. They get a bit of irritation on their neck and uh, giving them that extra comfort or break from the collar uh, by putting the harness on there really bodes well for them. Paracord. Uh, paracord is something that I usually do have in abundance with me while I'm out in the field and I'm sure you're very aware of the countless applications for paracord but I keep a bundle specifically for my dogs to use as a lead where I would basically tie one end of the paracord to a tree or something that uh, would basically be stationary and the other end would tie off to their leash instead of having a five foot lead now they can have maybe a 15 foot lead while we're on extended breaks and they could enjoy the surroundings and uh, do what they do. Water purifier. Uh, normally, I always keep a personal water purifier in my pack, but when I'm out there with my dogs, I opt for something that can uh, purify much more water than just something that would be personal. We'll get to uh, situations, once again, even in state parks where they have clearly labeled potable water. We'll count on that. We'll get to that, center, that uh, station and uh, there'll be a lock on the faucet, or it just won't be potable because of something that happened the day before, whatever the case may be. And after a couple times of getting caught in that situation, uh, you know, I kind of learned the hard way, and I make sure that I always have uh, a water purifier that'll uh, purify ample water for both me and my dogs. I definitely won't go out in the field with my dogs without a good water purifier, so keep that in mind. An LED dog collar. Uh, this is more of a recent addition. I had reviewed a few different LED dog collars over the past year, and I thought that they were cool. Never really deemed them a necessity until, of course, I had them with me. I was out in the field, started getting uh, dark, and I said, you know what, I have these, might as well put them on the dogs. And uh, once again, it was pretty cool because of the fact that I'm out there doing what I'm doing and, uh, you know, not always focusing on the dogs. And instead of always worrying or calling their name or, you know, searching for their leashes, I could kind of use my peripheral vision, know exactly what they are because of these collars. Also for safety, as we're out there sharing the trail with other people that might not be dog friendly or don't want to get startled by an 80 pound uh, pit bull that they happen to stumble upon as they're on the trail and it's getting dark. So once again, having these collars on, people see them, see them way ahead of time so it doesn't startle anybody and it bodes well for everybody's safety. Dog bowl. All right, once again, uh, something that's rudimentary, but uh, a lot of times we end up forgetting because I see that when I'm out there with other NTC members and they'll bring their dogs and uh, they forget to bring a bowl. So once again, whether it's for food, whether it's for water, it just makes life a heck of a lot easier, much more comfort for your dogs. And at the same time, you're not wasting anything. You're not wasting any of their kibble, any of their food, because you could just kind of ration it out rather than uh, by any means putting it out there and then half of it ends up on the ground. And, uh, you know, that's just a waste. Same goes for water, especially when we're trying to conserve water. So make sure you have a good bowl, a lot of options out there. Collapsible bowls I definitely prefer just because they store away uh, pretty easily and you could kind of just keep them in your pack and uh, always have them with you, uh, regardless even if your dog is with you or not, because uh, the weight is almost a uh, non-issue. Food and snacks. Uh, I have uh, friends of mine that once again will feed their pets before they go and uh, won't bring any other food out there or any other snacks. But uh, keep in mind, just like us, we're burning a ton of calories. The dogs are burning a ton of calories. We're burning a ton of calories. And you want to go ahead and replace them so they keep them at their uh, optimum level with uh, a bunch of energy to spare uh, so that they're not getting dogged out and we're not getting dogged out. And, you know, of course, which dog <laughs> that you know doesn't like snacks and doesn't like treats? 
And, uh, you know, while they're out there on the trail and they're keeping up and doing their thing, uh, not only is it a necessity for the extra calories, but it's also a reward as far as the way they see it. So having snap, snacks, uh, kibble, the cleaner the better, uh, so that they're uh, getting that good fuel into their system. Uh, just something that uh, is definitely a must, uh, for me at least. I usually keep a shemag with me, uh, regardless, uh, in my go bag, in my pack that's out with me in the field. But when it comes to my dogs, I definitely make sure that I have it because even when it's not super hot out there, we're still on the trail, we're still burning a lot of calories. A lot of times we're attacking the trail aggressively so that we could get to our base camp and do what we have to do uh, and being able to, once again, add more comfort to my dog. So what I do is I'll get some water or whether it's a nearby stream, lake, or even water that I just have on me, I'll go ahead and douse the uh, shemag wrap it around my dog's neck and it uh, just basically cools them off the same way that it would for us so it feels good for them gives them a little bit of break from the heat uh, kind of gives them a little bit of a recharge so once again something that I utilize that I find very beneficial and uh, if you give it a try it might work for you also a uh, d-ring or carabiner uh, make sure that's one that's certified for mountaine mountaineering you know a real deal one not these other smaller ones that seem to be attached to every gadget these days uh, nothing wrong with these except uh, you really can't rely on them they're not made for the purpose of what I'm about to talk about now but what I do keep one on here for is to hold the uh, hose uh, stationary as far as on my hydro pack but going back to the quality one here exactly where it is now here on my shoulder strap attached here to the webbing is uh, where I always keep it and what I do is attach uh, the dog leash to here allowing me to be hands-free that way I can do work dog is still leashed everybody's happy and it really does work well for me for uh, years now insect repellent okay this one's all natural three simple ingredients that you probably have at home anyway uh, if you're interested in the recipe I'll go ahead and put a link in the article so make sure that you uh, check that out for uh, much more information and description on all the items that I uh, went over in this video and uh, once again, not only for the comfort of my dogs to try to keep the critters off of them uh, from annoying them, but also trying to prevent a lot of the nasty diseases that are out there that ticks and, you know, other critters could go ahead and bring to them. So keep that in mind and watch what type of, uh, of chemicals you do put on your dog because you might be trying to help them in one way and at the same time affecting them neg negatively in another way. So, you know, research, research the stuff. We all have access to Google. Find a, repu a reputable source and, uh, you know, don't put anything on your dogs that you wouldn't put on yourself. So keep in mind that this isn't an all-encompassing uh, list or checklist of items. It's just basically the purpose of this article and uh, video that uh, you're watching now is basically to share ideas of things that I've seen that get neglected throughout the years that people don't bring out there that uh, dogs definitely need. And of course, other items that I found to be extremely useful for both me and my dogs. Once again, just because it works for us doesn't mean it works for you, but it stimulates your thinking. And if you grab one or two ideas from here that'll bode well, then you know what? I accomplished my mission here. As I referenced earlier, there is an article that accompanies this video with a lot more detail. So make sure you uh, check that out. The link is in the description. And once again, this is Helder. I really hope that you found this information uh, helpful.